never, nobody never got at me directly and said, we want you to join us and we're doing this. I have no fear of death. So, you know me. It just, it just confirms that what I said was true. Coolio knew he was playing with fire. He called out the industry, he spoke up when no one else would, and just a few years later, he was gone. Now we're left wondering, was Coolio taken out for exposing the hidden truths of the music industry? I've had come at me on some weirdo like on some gay Did the gay mafia he warned us about really have the power to silence him forever? You know that I have no fear of death. So you know me. It just, it just confirms that what I said was true. But that's just the beginning. From rumors of freak-offs to the systematic manipulation of black artists, there's more to this story than most realize. Some of Hollywood's biggest names, Diddy, Jay-Z, and the so-called gay mafia, have allegedly been running things behind the scenes for decades. Because for four years, I've been screaming, not just Diddy, but Diddy and Jay-Z are monsters. And the victim-making machine kept going on. Let's be real. In the world of hip-hop, exposing the truth can cost you everything. For years, rumors swirled about who controls the industry and what they force rappers to do to stay relevant. But it wasn't until Coolio, the man behind Gangsta's Paradise, started speaking up that people began to pay attention. Coolio wasn't just talking about shady deals or industry manipulation. He was talking about something deeper, darker, and far more dangerous. According to him, when he used to be famous in the industry, he was never approached directly. Instead, some people were sent to him for the message they wanted to give. But I will tell you, I've had come at me on some weirdo This statement was directed toward the Illuminati. It was quite fishy for him that the elites never contacted him by themselves. Instead, they sent shady people who would force him to do inappropriate things to get even a single song done. Motherfuckers come at me on some weirdo shit, like on some gay shit. I've had motherfuckers come at me on some, oh, you should do this type shit. The acts they asked him to do were so inhuman that he became very shocked, knowing that this is what it takes to make a position in Hollywood. They don't sense this. I, I view that as being um, inhuman. I view that as, I, I would never do that. And this was where he decided to reject them. He thought that rejecting them would be good for him and the industry too. But this decision proved to be even more bad for him. The elites of Hollywood tried their best to cancel him and did every wrong thing to him. What happened to me? Went to jail for some bull <laughs> Got convicted. Well, not necessarily convicted, but because I, I didn't do no time. They did so wrong to Coolio that he was sent to jail on a false charge. He was arrested at Los Angeles airport for the possession of substances. Coolio did not even know that there was a pipe and other substances in his bag. According to him, he never ever tried to put the substances in his luggage in his life. Never did that. I ain't never, I'm not, I'm not an idiot. When, when they, when they, the first thing I said, when they pulled that pipe out that bag, I said, that's not mine. When Coolio said this to the police, they responded that they would check. And they checked exactly the bag in which the things were put as if they knew that this was the suspicious bag. Never once have I put any dope inside my bag with all my wires, my Xbox, the, the bag that they're gonna open and search. Those possessions were not clearly Coolio's because, according to him, he was not so stupid that he would keep the substances among his other normal things. Anyways, the police at the airport did not believe him. Cooley even requested a DNA test to prove that those substance bags were his. And this is what they said. It's mine. Then my DNA will be on it, right? Yeah, you're right. But we don't do that. When Coolio saw that they were not listening to him, he decided to pay for the DNA test himself because all he wanted was to clear his name for the false accusation on the basis of which he was being examined at the airport. I said, okay, well then, let me pay to have it tested just so I can clear my name and motherfucker know that I am not that but this also did not work out for him, and consequently, he was arrested for the possession of substance and gun possession. Coolio was supposed to pay for three years in jail probation. However, as part of the negotiated plea deal that kept him out of jail, he was also required to complete community service for a period of 45 days despite the fact that his reputation was torn. When something happens, whether it's true or it's not true, once it's been said, mm -hmm. 
For most people, it's true. Later during the trials, it was proved that Coolio was not involved in the possession of any weapon possession. This is what he said during his interview. So, it was a misunderstanding. I do not condone the use of firearms, legal or illegal. Thanks to the court and the attorneys handling this for me so I can still do the work that I do. But for the substance possession case, he was sentenced to 10 months in jail with drug rehabilitation. And this was all done to him because he rejected the elites of Hollywood. This was just one incident that he revealed, and he wanted to tell more about this industry but he was afraid that they would do harm to him. Coolio knew that they were ultra powerful. There's a lot of s know that I want to tell people. It's a lot of things that I want to teach, but I'm afraid. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm scared because I, I got four grandchildren, and I got, I got, and I got, I got children. In the interview in which he was revealing the truth, he seemed to be so scared that they might harm his family. He decided to keep mum about the things he knows out of fear. But there were certainly some inappropriate activities that were going on during those days, which were also used to manipulate artists. People are telling the truth. I've seen some crazy shit. I've seen some crazy. Bro, I seen some like wow. I seen some and we go, what the f now? As soon as he disclosed everything that happened to him during his time in Hollywood, he started to receive death threats and ultimately after some time he was found dead. But before his death, this is what he said. It is worth noticing here that right after this video was released, Cooley was found dead in a bathroom. Before his death, he came to his friend's home for a hangout and went to use the bathroom but never came out of it alive. And when his friends went to check on him, they found him dead on the floor. The medics determined that he had suffered a severe heart attack. The Grammy Award-winning U.S. rapper Coolio has died in Los Angeles. The legendary entertainer, whose real name is artist Leon Ivey Jr., was 59 years old. In the years leading up to his death, Coolio became increasingly vocal about what he believed was happening behind closed doors in Hollywood. During interviews, Coolio revealed chilling details about what he called the gay mafia powerful figures who controlled black rappers by forcing them into compromising positions. He warned that if you didn't play along, you'd be blacklisted, or worse. But here's where it gets even more disturbing. Over the years, there have been numerous whispers about black male rappers being forced to participate in these events to keep their careers intact. Some claim these parties are used to humiliate and control artists, ensuring they stay loyal to the industry's power players. And who were two of the biggest power players during Coolio's time? You guessed it, Diddy and Jay-Z. Because for four years, I've been screaming, not just Diddy, but Diddy and Jay-Z are monsters. And the victim-making machine kept going on. Diddy and Jay-Z are no strangers to controversy, but few stories have rocked the industry like the allegations of their involvement in the gay mafia. Over the years, multiple artists have come forward, hinting at dark secrets within the hip-hop world. Rumors of freak-off parties, secret contracts, and manipulative tactics have been surfacing for years. But it's only now, with more people coming forward, that we're beginning to understand the extent of the gay mafia's influence. You see, Diddy has been a huge figure in the rap world for decades, creating hit after hit. But in recent years, he's been involved in so many lawsuits and scandals that it's his controversies making headlines more than his music. One of the more recent accusations against him comes from music producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones, who claims Diddy and his son Justin were involved in a shooting back in 2022, and that they tried to cover it up. Lil Rod says Diddy or Justin allegedly shot a 30-year-old man named G in the abdomen and near his hip during a writers and producers camp at Chalice Recording Studio in Los Angeles. What's even more alarming is that G has since disappeared. According to the report, the shooting happened in a bathroom at the studio, where Diddy, his son, and G went before the shots were fired. Lil Rod, who was nearby, said he feared for his own life during the incident. Lil Rod tried to help G by putting pressure on his wounds and calling for an ambulance, while Diddy and Justin allegedly disappeared into another part of the studio. What's even more shocking is that, according to Lil Rod, Diddy told him to lie to the police. The lawsuit claims Diddy instructed him to tell officers that G had been shot outside the studio in a drive-by, which wasn't true. When the LAPD arrived at the scene, it was quickly determined that the shooting didn't happen near the studio, 
Diddy's lawyer Sean Hawley said in a statement, Neither Sean nor Justin were anywhere near the area or even aware of what had happened until afterward, so they weren't even interviewed by the police. But this isn't the only thing Lil Rod has accused Diddy of. He also claimed that Diddy constantly groped him and that Diddy would lace drinks with drugs, sometimes serving them to young people. These shocking allegations paint a disturbing picture of Diddy's behavior behind the scenes. Lil Rod isn't the only one accusing Diddy of foul play. In the past, rapper T.I. made headlines when rumors spread that he had exposed some of Diddy's darkest secrets. According to the gossip, T.I. revealed that Diddy hosts secret parties where he films men engaging in inappropriate activities. These accusations were later echoed in Lil Rod's report, which claimed that Diddy forced him to record hours of illegal and incriminating footage. The allegations against Diddy don't stop at manipulation and threats. Lil Rod's report also says that Diddy would alternate between promises and threats, one moment offering him the world, and the next threatening him with violence. Mr. Combs would often switch up his approach. He would go from promising Mr. Jones the world to threatening Mr. Jones with physical harm. Mr. Combs threatened to eat Mr. Jones' face and informed Mr. Jones that he is willing to care his mother Janice Combs if he must in order to get what he wants so he wouldn't think twice to harm Mr. Jones, the complaint says. This kind of behavior isn't unique to Lil Rod's case either. There are other stories out there, including one from the late rapper Coolio, who often spoke out about powerful people in the industry misusing their influence. With these new allegations against Diddy, many fans believe that Coolio might have been talking about Diddy all along. Lil Rod's accusations against Diddy bear a striking resemblance to the things Coolio used to talk about. Coolio would mention how he was threatened with being cancelled if he didn't fall in line with the industry's elite. Now, with Lil Rod's report detailing Diddy's threats to destroy his career if he didn't comply, it's hard not to draw connections between the two. The belief that Diddy is part of an elite circle in the music industry has only grown stronger. But Diddy's behavior, especially when it comes to trying to control others, isn't limited to Lil Rod and Coolio. Comedian Cat Williams has also spoken out about an encounter he had with Diddy. Cat Williams recently broke the internet when he revealed that Diddy tried to entice him with over $50 million to attend his infamous freak-off parties. These weren't just regular parties. These were wild, unhinged events where Diddy allegedly sought total control over attendees, including their bodies. Now, I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times. Just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right. Because uh, P. Diddy be wanting the body. And you gotta tell him no. Kat also mentioned that there was a time when Harvey Weinstein, the infamous movie producer now known for numerous essay scandals, also tried to take advantage of him. According to Kat, Weinstein explicitly demanded that he perform S favors, specifically asking him to suck his wood in exchange for a movie role. I was, they canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my in front of all my people at my agency. Cat, however, stood his ground and flat out refused the proposition, not willing to compromise his morals or dignity, despite the potential career boost a role in a major movie could have given him. While Diddy's legal team has denied all the accusations laid against him, the court of public opinion is not so easily swayed. With Lil Rod, Coolio, and Cat Williams all sharing similar stories of threats and manipulation, it's hard to dismiss the possibility that Diddy is part of something much bigger and much darker than we ever imagined. You see, for those who dare to speak out, the consequences can be deadly. Coolio's sudden death in 2022 shocked fans worldwide, but many in the conspiracy community believe it was no accident. Coolio had made powerful enemies. He had spoken out about things the industry doesn't want you to know, and just like Tupac and Biggie, Coolio's life came to a sudden, tragic end. Coolio's death, though suspicious, has largely been forgotten. Yet, when we look back at his warnings, his words seem more relevant than ever. With new allegations coming out about Diddy and Jay-Z, it's hard not to draw connections between their rumored gay mafia control and Coolio's sudden death. Could it be that Coolio was taken out because he knew too much? Well, that might be the case according to DeHaven. The connections between Hollywood's drug problems and the shadowy billionaires controlling it have always raised eyebrows. One name keeps coming up, Jay-Z. One record, yeah, one record. And he's riding dirty. I don't know, he's probably a billionaire by now, quietly, quietly.
Jay-Z's rise to billionaire status has been clouded by rumors of his involvement in the drug world. In fact, insiders like DeHaven, Jay-Z's former associate, have gone on record stating that Jay wasn't just any hustler. He was a kingpin. He controlled a vast network of substance distribution, not just in the streets, but also behind the scenes of the music industry. He had a lot of say, so he had a 60, 50 percent. He could get out there. According to DeHaven, Jay-Z was moving 60% of the drugs circulating in the streets back in the day. But what most people don't know is that this alleged drug operation extended far beyond the streets of Brooklyn. It reached Hollywood's elite. Multiple sources have suggested that Jay-Z had become the go-to supplier for some of the biggest names in music and entertainment. Hollywood has long been plagued by substance abuse, but many believe it's no coincidence that so many stars who fell into addiction had ties to Jay-Z. In the world of hip-hop, where drug addiction has claimed the lives of countless legends, Tupac, DMX, and more, there's one common thread, the invisible hands feeding these addictions. And according to some, those hands belong to none other than Jay-Z himself. Jay-Z, it's a full circle. He came up selling drugs, blew up through music, so and then say. what? Coolio was one of the few brave enough to hint at these underground dealings. He warned of an industry where powerful figures, billionaires like Jay-Z, manipulated black artists, not just through contracts, but through drugs. The connections between these deaths and drug-related tragedies within hip-hop are unsettling. Jay-Z's empire wasn't just built on music. He built it off the backs of artists addicted to the very substances he was providing. So, was Coolio taken out for knowing too much? His mysterious passing in 2022, officially declared an overdose, has sparked intense speculation. Many now believe that his death may have been directly tied to Jay-Z's vast drug network. Could it be that Coolio, like so many others, was another victim of the billionaire's silent stranglehold on the industry? According to DeHaven, Jay-Z's drug operation wasn't just about business, it was about control. Lives were lost, not just on the streets, but in the music industry. The older guys that was raised us was disappeared. Those dudes was going to prison and dying and, and, and dying and tragic stuff was happening. In any case, in today's climate where Diddy's freak-off parties and Jay-Z's alleged ties to these exploitative practices are making headlines, Coolio's warnings are more relevant than ever. His mysterious death is now being looked at through a new lens. Was he taken out because he was about to reveal too much? The connections between his death and the powers that control Hollywood are hard to ignore. As more and more information comes to light about the gay mafia's whole on black entertainers. It becomes clearer why Coolio felt the need to speak out, and why his death has left so many questions unanswered. Coolio may be gone, but his message lives on. He was one of the few artists who dared to stand up to the powerful figures who have controlled the music industry for decades. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye!